Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 14th, and today we're going to take a look at the system out over the Pacific Ocean here. It's eventually going to move closer to our coastline here and eventually spread some moisture up from the south. There will even be a thunderstorm threat with this system Thursday and Friday. We'll take a look at how much we're going to destabilize the atmosphere across the region here. You can see here on the mid-level water vapor some tropical system development going on down here off the west coast of uh, Mexico. It's pretty typical this time of year. You can see the intertropical convergence zone as it moves north further into the summer months here, June, July, and August, our meteorological summer here. And jumping right into things here, you can see I left on what Saturday there and looks like you had a pretty couple cool days and another one today across the region below average since last Wednesday now. So it's almost a week there. It doesn't look like we're going to get very much above average here on in through the extended here as well. As you can see, we are averaging now 71 degrees on for a normal here on SeaTac this time of year. And again, 74 by the end of June. And one of my favorite heat waves last year, not really, but it was pretty extreme, 108 degrees there on June 28th. As you can see that we're probably going to be nowhere near anything like that this year. So take a look around the rest of the country, some heat advisories going on across there, some severe thunderstorm warnings. There's a system moving through Montana, high wind warning is in effect out there. Still some flood warnings going on near the Yellowstone area here. We'll check out some of that in detail as well. Red flag warnings going on. And jumping right into things here, this is the day two outlook. There is a pretty good tornado threat through portions of Minnesota into Wisconsin tomorrow. So heads up if you're traveling out there. And I wanted to show day three, they've introduced that general thunderstorm risk, mainly North Cascades, Okanagan Highlands, as we go through the day Thursday. That'll probably be increased a bit as we go through the day Friday. It looks like we might get a good burst of lightning coming up, especially eastern Oregon, eastern Washington, Idaho, Pan, Idaho. But we'll look at that a little bit closer tomorrow. Now looking here, this is the GFS showing some of these totals. You can see that slug of moisture that came through with the, with the atmospheric river that really brought that extreme flooding to portions of Yellowstone Park there. They were getting the snow runoff, and so the rivers were already high. Then you added this rare June atmospheric river that really brought the flooding hammer down on the region out there. You guys are probably seeing those videos about that house floating away in the river. Roads destroyed throughout the park, rock slides, all kinds of nasty stuff going on out there. And this is for media use here. And you can see that some of these washouts that occurred on the roadways were quite extreme. It's probably going to take months to possibly even years to recover in the park from all the damage done. Pretty extreme flooding set up there dealing with that snow melt. And again, that atmospheric river. So checking this out, here's Yellowstone here. And then looking at the overlay, you can see the precipitation that fell in the last seven days on top of that snow melt was just pretty much a disaster they had to evacuate some people out of the park via helicopter and again those roads could take a couple two three years you know to rebuild all that from that damage out there so taking a look here this is the 18z european model here you can see that low meandering off there it's not an exceptionally strong low or anything but you can see it's spreading moisture through early Thursday there, and you see how the flow kind of becomes southerly there on Thursday afternoon. Generally, North Cascades, probably eastern highlands, eastern areas of British Columbia there, the higher elevation on the day Thursday. Then watch as we go through Friday. Notice this flow is pretty southerly here, and that's a pretty good defluence aloft, which can bring some good instability with it. So we'll see just how this develops. There could be a thunderstorm roaming around Western Washington of the Cascades here on Friday. And you can see the slug of moisture moving up through Eastern Washington. And it's mostly Eastern Washington event. Looks like maybe Northern Eastern Oregon could get in on some of that action too. But taking a look here at the NAM 12 KM, as we go through the day, Thursday, you can see that low meandering out here. And you can see where the Cape values are kind of higher here through the Okanagan Highlands, maybe the North Cascades through the day Thursday. As we go through the day Friday, we destabilize pretty well on through eastern Washington here as well, too. As you can see a little bit in the Cascades, western Oregon, Washington, Oregon Cascades as well. So we'll have to watch this a little bit. These systems are very fickle as they come in here it, it's hard to tell just how much heating you're going to get what kind of instability just how the system is going to line up so we'll watch this again closely tomorrow and thursday for friday's potential thunderstorm event across some of the region here now checking out the european this is the 12z this is lightning potential as we go through wednesday here maybe some way up in british columbia there 
eastern portions. But as we go through Thursday, you'll see some of this get introduced down into Washington. Maybe some of the Cascades will get in that action a little bit here too. Okanagan Highlands, British Columbia, made in the eastern portions as well. And going through Friday, check this out. So we start to go through the afternoon. Instability builds. Looks like the Oregon Cascades might get some as this wave moves north and pushing forward again here. You'll see this pretty good lightning activity, maybe northeast Oregon on in through eastern Washington Friday evening. So we'll have to watch that. And again, we'll take a look at this closer tomorrow and on Thursday to kind of see what kind of thunderstorm threat we're dealing with. Now, this is precipitable water. I just want to kind of show you guys that atmospheric river that's off the coastline now. Watch how this just kind of gets decimated really easily. This low just kind of pinches it off and dives down off our coastline. You can see the spin here and then it just kind of throws up general moisture amounts. You know, we're not looking at any kind of a, a heavy precipitation maker yet. I mean, some of these thunderstorms could drop some pretty heavy precipitation, especially for eastern Washington, northeast Oregon. So we don't want to rule that out just yet. But there's no big atmospheric river imminent for the Pacific Northwest here. Now, taking a look here, total precipitation amounts as we go through the day Wednesday, it looks like a pretty dry day, some high clouds, maybe some precipitation moving on in later Wednesday night. Thursday, you can see the precipitation starting to build up here. Could have a thunderstorm or two across the Cascades, maybe even the Okanagan Highlands, probably better chance for, uh, again, Eastern BC. You can go through the day Friday, you can see this moisture move up into especially northeast washington into british columbia here on through saturday morning so again these systems are fickle we'll pay attention we'll start to look at the high resolution models as they come in here the next couple of days the nam 3 km and the her as the system gets closer i wanted to show you guys this this is the northern hemisphere look here's the north pole there's greenland there's alaska here's russia over here washington oregon california hawaiian islands and this is 700 millibar temperatures about 10,000 feet and basically what's happening at this time of year is the polar vortex is becoming much weaker this cold air that's up over the poles just isn't the same the sun's rays are moving north the oceans are warming it's becoming our summertime here in the northern hemisphere so of this cold air just does not have the same punch. You'll notice we had some of these lobes moving down over us earlier this spring and whatnot. And you can see this is mostly confined now to the North Pole. Even though we are getting some pretty chilly air aloft, it is not like what we're getting you know, earlier in the spring or in the winter time there. So that's what's, that's what's going on. That's why our systems tend to be weaker as we get into the summer. You know, we don't get much precipitation here in the Pacific Northwest. These systems lose a lot of their punch. They just don't have that cold air to work with anymore. Now, taking a look here in North America, Alaska, here's Washington, Oregon, California. My typical look at things here. 500 millibars, 18,000 feet, general trough and ridge position here. See that transient ridge move through tomorrow, and then that trough quickly comes in and it kind of hangs on the west coast here and that's what's going to kind of bring that southerly defluent flow across pacific northwest it's going to be hard to pinpoint where those center storms are going to hit probably up almost right up until the event occurs so we'll watch those high resolution models again as i said before but you see that trough kind of hangs out all the way in through the weekend here keeping us pretty chilly around the area here let's back up to the 12z European and see if it shows anything in the extended. It does show this ridge kind of building in here as we go on in through early next week. So that's what we're that's what I'm watching anyway here as we go through later this week and on into early next week for maybe a nice few days before the uh, European has another system diving down through the southeast Alaska over the Pacific Northwest again. So we'll see what that troughing does. That'll probably change a little bit here because that. It's pretty far out in the forecast, really. But you can see some nice ridging early next week. So maybe we'll get a couple of nice days out of that. We'll help pay attention to that as well. But if we look at this morning's European, the ensemble runs here, you can see that really we're just kind of dealing with below average temperatures. I mean, look at Saturday. This would be a whopping 15 degrees below normal here. This is just kind of crazy. Actually, this is the deterministic. Let's look at the ensemble run here. And we'll check out the 12Z. So let's back that up here. But you can see as we go, I mean, even the European doesn't really have much of a warm up, a little bit of a warm up early next week as that ridging is around. But again, at that range, this could easily change, especially if that ridging built up a little more, this could change quite rapidly. And really in the extended here, this is just kind of trending back towards normal. But you can see how we're below average all the way in through probably early next week. And checking this out, La Nina update came out on, I believe it was yesterday. But anyway, we've warmed up the Central Pacific a bit here. 
0.7. We were at one point negative 1.1. So we did warm up the Pacific, Central Pacific a little bit here. You can see this here, change in weekly sea surface temperature anomalies here. You see that little bit of warming going on here. So we're starting to come out of La Nina a little bit, even though we are forecast to be kind of stuck in this La Nina potentially through the winter. But you can see the odds here. It looks like as we move into winter, we're just not quite sure what's going on here. And really, we're getting close to being in neutral territory as we get towards the winter here. So we'll see how this works out. I think they have it at 58, 59%. If I'm not mistaken, we'll scroll down and look at that. But you can see we're going to be right on the borderline. This negative 0.5 is the divider between neutral conditions and La Nina conditions. And we're right there on that borderline here as we go through November, December. You can see this has us warming up the Central Pacific to basically neutral conditions as we go through later January into February. So we'll see how this works out here. I don't think models have a good uh, gr uh, grasp on what's going to happen with that yet. So we'll keep watching this, you know, right now we're just looking at a possible third La Nina in a row. So it's kind of interesting to look at. And it always has a big play on our weather around here as we found out this spring and now going into summer, we're pretty chilly. And that's kind of typical of La Nina conditions. But you can see as we go through the fall areas into early winter, 58, 59% chance of another La Nina. So could happen again. We may even come out of it a little bit this summer and then go back into it as we get towards fall and winter. So we'll have to watch and see how that goes. Kind of exciting to watch to see if we're going to get another La Nina rolling through here. And the drought monitor, it relaxed some of that exceptional drought along some of the eastern slopes of Oregon. So that atmospheric river it helps. It'll probably help a little bit more and that'll probably show up a little bit more next week too. But you can see there was some severe drought all the way towards Yellowstone here too. So that moisture that moves in will help with some of the drought, but at the same time, it's so devastating and it really hammered the park there. And you know, Yellowstone gets what hundreds of thousands of visitors a year and it's really going to hurt the park trying to fix those roads and get everything back up to speed there. But you can see Western Washington, a good portions of Northwest Oregon is out of drought conditions. Some portions of Northeast Oregon are out of it too. And it's been relaxed. We're just now in moderate drought in Eastern Washington, which is pretty typical. Like I've said before, drought is a natural process, especially once you get East of the Cascades of Oregon, Washington, I do panhandle out of a drought. Northwest Montana is also out of it too. But there are some areas of still some exceptional drought. Um, we're expecting a little bit above normal monsoon average season going through Arizona here too. So it'll help with some drought concerns down there. But you can see Nevada, you guys have probably heard about Lake Mead going on down there. So any kind of rain they can get, monsoon moisture, whatnot, that can move through that area this summer would be greatly beneficial. But I'll do another briefing tomorrow morning, just getting caught back up here. I just got back from storm chasing the last three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, back today. It was fun out there, had fun with my son and got to hang out with a lot of storm chasers out there. No tornadoes. It's been kind of a, a drought in my last several chases here. I've not seen any good tornadoes. I had the really good one in Iowa in April. And since then, it's kind of been a tornado drought. One of my biggest tornado droughts, actually. But I'll keep plugging away at it here and keep waiting for the next system to roll through here. But yeah, so we're going to have our own thunderstorm chances here, especially over the, some of the higher terrain, Okanagan Highlands, Cascades, Eastern Washington, Oregon, Eastern British Columbia here. We'll watch how the system develops here. And I'll do another briefing tomorrow as usual, and we'll get back up to speed here across Pacific Northwest. So hope you guys are doing well. Click like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.